Hi, I'm Gary from VTechCorvette.com. Uh, what I'd like to show you today is a couple of trailing arm assemblies and how we build them. Uh, we're talking specifically about Corvette trailing arms. Corvettes from 1965 through 1982. Uh, first thing I want to show you is an old trailing arm that we would get in for rebuild. Uh, this is pretty well an example of what we would get it in to be rebuilt. Uh, when GM originally built these trailing arms, they were riveted to the spindle. That caused some problems of servicing the rotor with runout and also gaining access to the parking brakes behind it. They had to drill out the rivets to do, to do that. Let me take this off and get it out of the way. This is, a, like I say, a pretty good example of what we get in to be rebuilt. During the rebuild process, uh, what we, we do with a typical trailing arm, everything's disassembled, etc. Uh, the, the arm is uh, completely sandblasted and epoxy coated. Uh, we use specifically certificate bearings in all our rebuilds along with the Mobile One synthetic grease. Uh, we install uh, stainless steel hardware on the inside of the here, uh, new emergency brake shoes, a new dust shield. Also a uh, guide plate, and last but not least, up here we put in a new bushing. One of the most critical parts in the assembly of these uh, trailing arms is the spacer here. This spacer controls the end play of the spindle to keep the uh, uh, rotor, rotor from cavitating back and forth. Uh, this little washer right here is inside here. This is the spindle, this is the back flange, this is a grease seal, grease seal, a bearing, bearing, a large spacer, and this little red uh, spacer right here is this part that I got in my hand. We've got one in there. And that controls the, the end play. We keep the end play down to one to two thousandths. Uh, we grind every one of these specifically for each trailing arm assembly that we build. One of the other major differences that we at VTech Corvette do is this is a, a spindle that would come out of a trailing arm. Uh, aside from the new wheel studs, we take each spindle and line the bearing journals within half a thousandth and take a light skin cut on this face. Uh, generally there's a uh, run out here of five to ten thousandths and that's all we take off. doesn't hurt the thickness of the, what we're doing here at all. Uh, in doing that, uh, it, it eliminates the cavitation or back and forth of the rotor when it's mounted. And I'll show you what that looks like here. We're going we're gonna to take this rotor, and you have to have a good rotor. It can be used or new. Uh, we're going to take and mount it up here on the spindle. This, let me back up a little bit. This trailing arm was built this morning. There is no special blueprinting done to it other than what we would normally build in building a trailing arm assembly. Stick that on there. Put the nuts on. And what we're going to do is check the run out of, the, of this rotor after mounting it. A little bit quicker here the impact. And if you can get in here close with the dial indicator, I'll put that up here. Like that down. Want the needle on the uh, dial indicator here. Okay, now it's zero. We're going to take and spin this rotor. You see that indicator didn't move more than a thousandth the way it's set up. Again, there's two big differences that we do, probably the other builders don't do, is the spacer setting the in play, the in and out of the rotor or spindle, and also the machining of the spindle, this face. Uh, 
keeping it within half a thousandth. So, if you got any other questions or anything, you can probably just go to vtechcorvette.com and check us out. Thank you.